Hi everyone, my name is Jia Dai Liu, Senior Simulation Specialist at RTDS Technologies. Today I would like to talk about the development of phase domain frequency dependent transmission line model on FPGA for real time digital simulator. I will first start off with the motivation and objective behind our work. The frequency dependent phase domain transmission line model performs all calculations in the phase domain and is considered numerically efficient and robust for both underground cables and overhead lines. RTDS Technologies has developed a processor based large time step model with a time step size of around 50 microseconds. However, for HVDC VIC real time simulation, the time step is required to be relatively small, for example, 3 microseconds, to accurately simulate the high frequency switching circuit. As a result, there is a need to develop a frequency dependent phase domain transmission line model for small time step simulations. Nowadays, the FPGA is being widely used to design computational intensive applications due to its parallel architecture and pipelining computation. And this is what led us to develop a FPGA-based frequency-dependent phase domain transmission line model for small time step simulation. The time domain solution for the frequency-dependent phase domain transmission line model can be expressed as the equation one and two, and its nodal equivalent circuit is represented in this figure. The matrix G is the equivalent impedance matrix, and uh, I his K and I his the M are his recurrent vector. The symbol star indicate the matrix vector convolution. Then the question becomes how to update the his recurrent terms in each simulation time step, which has also convolution computing involved. Two state variables x, y, c, and x, h are defined here to solve the the hardware design of this IPG based model has been fully pipelined and paralleled to achieve the lowest time step size. The sending end and the receiving end calculation are done in parallel due to the nature of traveling time delay of a transmission line. The two state variables x, h, and x, y, c are also updated in parallel as shown in the left figure. Once XYC and XH are updated, two convolution modules are executed in parallel to carry out uh, the two convolution within each module. All calculations are also done in parallel and pipeline. To interface the FPGA-based model to the rest of the small time step network, a one small time step travel time virtual line is connected to the terminal of the transmission line model to provide a stable interface. Since the virtual interface line has a travel time of one small time step, the IPG can send the previous time step injection current to the simulator at the very beginning of each simulation time step, so that a smaller simulation time step around 3 microseconds can be achieved. Alternatively, this virtual line can be removed from the IPG based line model to make this model an embedded model. This means the FPGA has to wait until receiving the terminal voltage before starting its calculation, which results in a large simulation time step, which is around 5 microseconds. Before implementing any application in a digital system, the data representation is always the first consideration since it affects the accuracy of the computation and the hardware resource utilization. For a frequency-dependent line model, the convolution requires highly accurate computation and more floating-point system bits are desired. In the non-real-time and large-time step real-time simulation, the computation are done in double-precision floating-point to, to guarantee accurate computation. However, on FPGA, due to the hardware resource and the restriction of the time step size, the implementation of a double precision model is very difficult. In this paper, two data representations are implemented in two FPGAs. 
One single position floating point design is implemented on IPG Vertex 7, IPG VC 707, and a customized 48 bit position floating point design is implemented on UltraSkill Plus, IPG VC 118 to compare the precision of the different floating point system. The connection between FPGA and RTDS is shown in this figure. A USB cable is used to download the hardware design into FPGA, and an optical fiber cable is connected between the FPGA and the simulator. Here, a RTDS normal core is used. This optical cable is responsible for downloading the transmission line parameter to FPGA at the case startup. In each simulation time step, this cable is also used to exchange the injection current between the simulator and the, the FPGA, and also send the monitor signals such as voltage and current signals to the simulator. The FPGA runs at 100 MHz and its hardware resource utilization and the time step are summarized in these two, two tables. The left table summarizes the hardware utilization for the single precision floating point design on VC707. From this table, it can be clear seen that almost a full lookup table, block RAM, and the DSPs are occupied. So, it is not possible to accommodate a customized 48 bit floating point design on FPJ VC707 at the same simulation time step. The right table summarizes the hardware resource utilization for 48 bit floating point design on FPJ VC118. We have analyzed three case studies to show the effectiveness and accuracy of our proposed IPG-based model. The first case study is a three-phase power system where a foot bus is placed in the middle of a transmission line. The same system is simulated in both large time step and small time step. In the small time step simulation, the transmission line is simulated on IPG and the rest of the power In this case study, we applied a single phase A fault at the foot bus and plotted the three phase voltage and the current waveform from both simulations on top of each other to validate the IPJ based model. As we can see here, the simulation results are closed matched. Our second case study demonstrates the precision has a great impact on the model's accuracy. The test system is built and run in the test is done by doing a sending and voltage step up and plotting the sending and the branch curved waveform together. As we can see, the PS cat, the large time set model, and 48 bits FPG based model simulation give match the results before and after the step up operation. However, the results from IPG based single precision model are departing from the others because the step up operation. This case study clearly shows that the precision will have a great impact on the model accuracy. And this is because the convolutions are basically multiple accumulation operations for some line and cable with a large number of conductors, poles, and delay groups if the floating point system does not have enough bits to accurately represent a real number. The error will be accumulated in the convolution and give inaccurate and frequency response is an important concern to the power system due to the potential great impact from a sudden loss of generation or loads during disturbance or restoration. For our third case study, we investigated the frequency response of the proposed FPGA-based model, which essentially is a combination of 
frequency dependent phase domain transmission line and interface burden line. Two components developed by RTDS technologies are used to carry out the frequency response result. A frequency scan component is used to carry out the theoretical results in large time step. A harmonic scan component is used to carry out the frequency response in both large and small time step simulation. The results from 1 Hz to 1000 Hz of both methods are plotted in Figure A. As can be shown here, the frequency response of the processor-based model, the green waveform, is very close to the theoretical result, the blue waveform. However, the frequency response of the FPGA-based model, the red waveform, has a discrepancy compared to the other tools. The reason is because, as mentioned before, the FPGA-based line model essentially is a combination of frequency-dependent transmission line and the burden line, and the burden line does have an impact on the frequency response. To validate this, the response of the FPGA-based embedded line model is plotted in figure B, which matched to the processor-based model very well. The users can trade off the priority between the time step and the frequency response then determine whether to keep the interface of the In conclusion, we have proposed a FPGA-based phase domain frequency-dependent transmission line model for real-time simulation. Taking the nature advantage of FPGA, the FPGA-based model achieves a significant smaller time step. We propose a customized 48 bits floating point design to enhance the precision of the model and have used both time domain simulation and frequency scanning to validate the model. We have also developed a new option to eliminate the interface line, which brings more accurate performance at the price of increasing the time step from 3 microsecond to 5 microsecond. And with that, I have come to the end of my presentation. Thank you to everyone who joined, and I'd be glad to take any questions.